Warning, this super edgy episode just might have some mature content. By mature, we mean juicy details about those oh-so-dull historical events with graphic descriptions. Kids, you might need a babysitter for this one, because we wouldn't want you to accidentally learn something about history. God forbid. Enjoy. Or don't, we don't care, and just a tiny little thing to keep in mind. We all love being interrupted by ads while trying to enjoy some precious historical content. It's not like we could do without those ever so fascinating paid promotions that miraculously support the podcast's production costs. But hey, who needs an uninterrupted historical journey when you can have some good old product placements, right? Broadcasting live from an undisclosed bunker, it's the Reasonably Priced Time Machine Podcast, with your host, Professor Ryan Lancaster. Also featuring a good dose of mediocrity from the talents of Archie and Hildy. Episode 63, Back in Time. Welcome, dear listeners, to the Reasonably Priced Time Machine podcast. I'm your host, Professor Lancaster, and today we're diving deep into the annals of history, where the past is as elusive as my last clean pair of underwear. And I am Archie, the robot with more computing power than your grandma's abacus. And I'm Hildy, the sassiest sidekick this side of the space-time continuum. Today, folks, we're peeling back the layers of history to uncover the secrets of the Mississippian, Hauakam, and Iroquois cultures. It's like archaeology, but with less dusting for fingerprints. We'll explore how these ancient civilizations contributed to the birth of American food and music. Wonder if the Mississippian's version of a hit song was just a really catchy bird call. Quite possibly Hilby. So, fasten your seatbelts and hold onto your bifocals, dear listeners, as we embark on a journey through time, one that might just make you question the meaning of it all. Or at least wonder if our podcast will be a historical footnote someday. Remember folks, even if history is a never-ending loop, at least our jokes aren't. Let's get this podcast rolling, shall we? What does Professor Lancaster think? In 1492, a daring adventurer named Christopher Columbus set forth on a momentous expedition that unveiled the marvels of the Americas. This profound expedition brought about an extraordinary juncture in world history. The convergence of European explorers and the native inhabitants ignited a momentous collision of traditions, propelling lasting ramifications on societies and fundamentally shaping the fabric of civilizations. The consequences of Columbus's arrival on the indigenous communities were undeniably significant and enduring. We're talking about violence, displacement, and utter cultural chaos. The Europeans brought along their fancy gadgets and brutal military tactics, and the natives found themselves facing an unfathomable force. The conflict became an unavoidable reality as the distribution of power was heavily skewed, resulting in the domination of numerous indigenous societies. Yet, the tale did not culminate at that juncture. On the contrary, the European influence transcended mere territorial assertions. It forged ahead to displace the very roots of the indigenous communities. Coerced migration became the strategy, wresting away ancestral territories and time-honored customs, casting the native inhabitants into a state of profound ambiguity. And let's not forget the insidious cultural invasion. The Europeans rolled in with their strange customs, incomprehensible languages, and newfangled religions, challenging the very essence of indigenous cultures. It was a full-on assault, and the consequences echoed through the generations. We need to acknowledge the power of perspective to wrap our heads around the true extent of this historical mayhem. Traditional historical accounts have been shamelessly Eurocentric, sweeping the suffering and resilience of the indigenous folks under the proverbial rug. It's high time we break free from this biased narrative and start giving due credit to the perspectives of the marginalized. To grasp the scope of indigenous losses, we must reckon with the devastating impact of diseases introduced by the Europeans. These viruses played a sick game of dominoes with indigenous populations, decimating their numbers and leaving a trail of destruction. We need to untangle this mess to see what was caused by the germs and what was fueled by the colonizers' nefarious ambitions. Historians have often had a bad habit of glorifying great men while ignoring the struggles 
and contributions of the underdogs. The allure of history lies not solely in its prominent figures, but also in the unsung heroes who play supporting roles. These obscured narratives harbor a trove of invaluable insights into the intricacies of American history, serving as poignant reminders that the superficial portrayals often leave much untold. The saga of the Americas weaves a captivating tapestry of diverse experiences and interwoven histories, resembling a mosaic of intertwined tales that defy simplistic categorization. Appreciating this intricate web of stories demands a willingness to abandon rigid confines and embrace the boundless complexity inherent in the past. Yet, as with any grand chronicle, challenges persist, posing barriers to unraveling the full extent of historical truth. We've got storytelling biases, conflicting viewpoints, and historical records that are anything but crystal clear. Some scholars argue against the idea of deliberate European genocide, highlighting the intricacies behind the decline of indigenous civilizations. We're swimming in a sea of misinformation, and it's up to historians to navigate these murky waters. Mississippian culture. The Mississippian culture, a remarkable pre-Columbian civilization, thrived in the Ohio and Mississippi valleys and left its mark on the earth like a stamp of grandiosity. And there isn't any denying the show's star was that Cahokia site, smack dab in present-day Illinois. We will dig deep into why studying this Mississippian culture is worth our time and how it ties into the veins of U.S. history. We'll be eyeing their triumphs, trade routes, social structures, and how it all came crashing down, painting us a vivid picture of the complexity and diversity of prehistoric North America. This culture isn't just some ancient tale, it's got its claws in the present-day southeastern Indian nations, revering their roots and their ancestral mounds. The Mississippian folks sprung up around 950 and were no amateurs. They built their mighty cities along the Mississippi River, and there isn't one grander than Cahokia. The monks' mound of theirs stood tall and proud, outshining other famous structures like the Pyramid of the Sun in Mexico or even big pyramids in Egypt. Cahokia spread over six square miles, showing off their smarts in astronomy and understanding soil types. With a population of roughly 30,000 folks at its peak in 1250, Cahokia was the cream of the crop, the most significant city in prehistoric North America, and that isn't any small feat. Cahokia was like the big boss of the region, bringing folks together for trade and chit-chat, mixing it up with neighboring chiefdoms from the Great Lakes down to the Gulf of Mexico. Their trade networks spread like wildfire, sharing culture, cosmology, and art symbols, and that stuff hasn't faded away. It had a long-lasting effect on the southeastern Indian nations, like the Cherokee, Choctaw, and Creek. They picked up the tradition of building platform mounds for council houses, keeping the Mississippian spirit alive and kicking. But, like with all good things, it had to end. Around 1450, the Mississippian culture took a punch to the gut and its population fell like a rock. We still need to figure out why, but there's talk of climate change messing with their crops, fights breaking out over fertile lands, and nasty epidemics sneaking in through trade networks. Whatever it was, the consequences shook the region to its core, that's for sure. Studying the Mississippian culture isn't a walk in the park, but a worthy one. We get to understand the heart and soul of pre-Columbian America, the stories and struggles of a mighty people that shaped this land before the Europeans barged in. This Mississippian tale doesn't just end there. It stretches its arms into the present-day southeastern Indian nations, showing us how their roots run deep and they're still holding on tight to their traditions and the ancestral mounds. It's like an ancient bond that refuses to be broken. Those Mississippian folks were some crafty engineers. Their urban planning was a masterpiece, with monumental earthworks that'll leave you gawking. And the way they dabbled in astronomy was no small thing. These folks had smarts and style, making their mark on the land like no other. Their trade networks were the talk of the town back then, and it still echoes in the southeast. Like a river flowing from generation to generation, cultural exchange left an indelible mark on their Native American communities. The mounds and symbols are all part of the Mississippian legacy that keeps living. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. That sharp population decline, it's like a haunting reminder of how fragile things can be. It's like a warning from the past, showing us that even the mightiest can fall, and we best keep our eyes peeled for modern day challenges. Hohakam Culture Once upon a time, the Hohakam culture reigned supreme in the scorching heat of the American Southwest. These folks were no ordinary prehistoric civilization. 
They had something special up their sleeves in their fields. They tamed the unforgiving desert by conjuring an ingenious irrigation system that turned barren lands into thriving farmlands. Talk about making lemonade out of cacti. The Hauhakam, with their brilliant engineering minds, created an intricate web of canals that stretched over 110,000 acres by 1300. That's like building a labyrinth to lead thirsty crops to the promised land of hydration. Not an easy feat, but these desert wizards pulled it off with style. So, what did this mean for the Hauhakam society? It meant life flourished like a saguaro in springtime. With plenty of crops, their population boomed, and their communities grew larger and more organized than a pack of tumbleweeds in a sandstorm. And all that surplus grub wasn't just good for their bellies, it also opened doors for trade and friendly neighborhood chats between villages. Picture how Hackam society as one big, happy, extended family reunion. They stuck together like glue, clustering their houses in cozy residential areas. It was like playing musical chairs, but instead of chairs, they had homesteads. And this tight-knit community didn't stop at sharing their homes, they shared resources and chores as well. It was communal living at its finest, an ancient precursor to those trendy co-living spaces you see nowadays. And if you think the How Hackam were all work and no play, think again. They knew how to throw a good party. Community gatherings at ball courts and temple mounds were all the rage, where they'd bond, trade stories, and probably exchange a few jokes about the weather they were having. These shindigs weren't just for fun, they also played a crucial role in keeping those social bonds strong and facilitating village matchmaking. But life isn't all sunshine and rainbows, especially not in the desert. How Hackam's story takes a tragic turn as we approach the 1200s. Suddenly, they vanish from the archaeological record like a mirage in the distance. Hue the ominous music and bewildered archaeologists scratching their heads. Theories abound. Was it floods? Salty fields? Maybe a bit of old-fashioned warfare? Those are all contenders, but recent studies have an alternative tale. They proposed that a gnarly drought in the Four Corners area caused folks to grab their water bottles and migrate southward, leaving behind their once thriving lands. The tale of the How Hackam has a timeless message for us modern folks. Their engineering marvels showcase the human spirit's resilience and ability to conquer even the harshest environments. They mastered the art of squeezing the life out of a stone and turning it into a blossoming oasis. But, as with all good stories, there's a moral tucked away in the enigmatic collapse of the How Hackam civilization. It's a cautionary tale, reminding us not to take Mother Nature for granted. She whispers, you with the fancy irrigation systems, don't forget about me. Our complex societies, just like the Hauhakam, rely on delicate balances with nature. Ignore those balances, and we may find ourselves scribbling our archaeological mysteries for future generations to unravel. Ultimately, the Hauhakam leaves us with a legacy worth cherishing. Their ingenuity and unity are a shining beacon of hope in the arid desert of history. Let's learn from their achievements, respect our environment, and write a sustainable and brilliant future like the How Hackam once were. And now, a short commercial break and a word from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather round. Have we got a groundbreaking product to introduce to you? You thought you'd seen it all, but you haven't seen nothing. That's right folks. Nothing. The revolutionary, life-changing concept that's taking the world by storm. Are you tired of the constant barrage of exciting experiences and meaningful connections? Do you find yourself yearning for the sweet embrace of emptiness? Well look no further. Nothing is not just an absence of things, it's a lifestyle. Imagine a world where expectations and dreams are shattered into insignificant pieces. With nothing, you'll never have to worry about happiness, fulfillment or purpose again. Act now, and we'll throw in our deluxe package, absolute nothing. Yes, you heard that right. It's like nothing, but even more, nothing. Your friends will be amazed as you effortlessly transcend the bounds of existence itself. Who needs joy, success, or even essential human interaction? With nothing, you'll be the envy of. Well, no one because they'll be too busy chasing their futile desires. Are you worried about the meaninglessness of life? Don't be. Because with nothing, you can revel in the sheer absurdity of it all. Scream into the void, and guess what? The void doesn't care. It's nothing. So, folks if you're ready to embrace the ultimate void, 
call 1-800-EMBRACE-NOTHING and order nothing today. Say goodbye to ambition purpose and genuine emotions. Say hello to a life of exquisite nothingness. Nothing. Because, in the grand scheme of things, does anything even matter? Disclaimer, nothing is not responsible for any existential crises, feelings of emptiness, or loss of motivation that may arise from using our product. Use nothing at your own risk. And now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Iroquois Nation The Iroquois League also known as the Iroquois Confederacy, is a prime example of Native American political wizardry that deserves applause. These folks played the unity game way before the Europeans crashed the party. Imagine a scene from the historical past, circa 1450, when five prominent Iroquoian tribes, namely the Mohawk, Onega, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca, wisely resolved to set aside their divergences and merge in the region south of the Great Lakes. Their remarkable decision materialized as they conceived of forming a confederacy, a genuinely exceptional union of tribes akin to a league of extraordinary entities. Their grand plan was to handle internal disputes like adults and fend off pesky outsiders together. And it worked. The Iroquois League had it going on with their highly egalitarian society, where each tribe had autonomy but worked together on everyday stuff. Picture a council of 50 wise folks representing all five tribes gathered round the fire to settle disputes and make harmonious decisions. No drama, no heated arguments, just smooth sailing all the way. And guess what? This harmony at home meant they could focus on expanding their territory and increasing their population. It's like they were the original gangsters of multitasking. The juiciest part was their political game was on point. As European settlers started swarming in like hungry seagulls at a picnic, the Iroquois League said, hold up, we got this. They knew how to navigate the European power play like a seasoned chef dancing around hot pants. These Iroquois cats played the French against the British, juggling them like hot potatoes. They knew their strategic location between Pennsylvania and New York gave them an edge, and they milked it for all it was worth. The result was a favorable outcomes in negotiations with the colonial bigwigs. And listen, they weren't just sitting back and sipping maple syrup, they were right in the thick of it, meditating and forming alliances between European and Native American factions. Talk about networking skills. The Iroquois League was making waves and shaping early American history like the badass influencer they were. But we must recognize the lessons learned from their story. In today's world, where diverse communities struggle to work together, the Iroquois League shows us how it's done, cooperation, consensus building, and conflict resolution like pros. Their diplomatic finesse is a textbook example of how small groups can stand tall in the face of complex geopolitics. Modern diplomats take notes because these guys knew how to navigate tricky waters. Let's not overlook that they didn't speak for all five tribes. Not every decision was a unanimous victory dance. Looking back, we must remember that not all findings were perfect and not all tribes may have felt love equally. Ultimately, even though they were a diplomatic powerhouse, the European steamroller couldn't be stopped. Land and autonomy were lost, and the Iroquois League faced the harsh reality of colonial domination. Nevertheless, the Iroquois League's legacy is etched into the very fabric of North American history. Their unity, diplomacy, and endurance model have a lot to teach us today. Birth of American Food America, a vast expanse of land with a cornucopia of ecological wonderlands, was once the canvas for the ingenious culinary strokes of its indigenous inhabitants. Hundreds of Native American tribes roamed the country, each adapting their culinary craft to the resources and climate of their region. It's a culinary journey through time that gave birth to American cuisine as we know it today, and boy, is it a feast for thought. Let's start with the Eastern Woodlands folks, who had their secret weapon dubbed the Three Sisters. No, it's not some covert spy agency, it's a trio of essential staple foods, corn, beans, and squash. They cultivated these bad boys together like an inseparable culinary dream team. Corn played the supportive friend, allowing beans to climb its stalks to new heights, while squash acted like the security detail, protecting and supporting the entire root system. Talk about teamwork. The result, a sustainable and varied food source that put the eastern woodlands on the map, culinarily speaking. Maple syrup, the nectar of the gods, or at least the eastern woodlands tribes, was another star in their culinary constellation. Extracted from maple tree sap, this natural sweetener sweetened their lives and led to an epic snow tree, taffy. 
Thickened sap poured onto the snow, creating a delectable concoction that sent taste buds soaring. This was the confirmed Willy Wonka golden ticket. But let's gallop over to the Great Plains and Canadian prairies, where the Plains Indians had their secret sauce for survival, bison. These majestic creatures weren't just a sight to behold but a culinary lifeline. Preserving bison meat was necessary with winters as harsh as a cold-hearted breakup. So, they whipped out their culinary wands and turned the meat into jerky-like strips, sustenance during the toughest of times. Much like a survival reality show, these folks were the masters of adaptation. Now, let's take a culinary detour to the Pacific Northwest, where the indigenous peoples enjoyed a veritable buffet of nature's finest. Picture this, succulent seafood like salmon, fish, and shellfish on one side of the plate, while tender meats like deer, duck, and rabbit grace the other. This region's mild climate was a culinary blessing, allowing them to feast on diverse fare year-round. They lived in a food paradise, and we were all drooling in jealousy. And up north in Alaska, the native peoples knew how to work with what they had, and boy, they had some impressive options. Picture this, seals, salmon, and moose taking center stage in their nutrient-dense diet. With edible plants playing hard to get, their diet was low on carbs, but high on fat and protein. They were the carnivorous connoisseurs, thriving on nature's bounty like a boss. But folks, this isn't just a culinary exploration, it's a vital lesson in cultural preservation and sustainable living. The knowledge and practices of indigenous peoples shaped American cuisine, and we must honor that legacy. Embracing indigenous ingredients and cooking methods adds diversity to our plates and expands our culinary horizons like a flavor explosion. However, let's not brush over the negatives. Throughout history, indigenous cultures were marginalized and their culinary practices were appropriated. Forced assimilation robbed them of their traditional food systems and knowledge. It's a bitter pill to swallow, a dark stain on the annals of American culinary history. So, let's savor the positive and confront the negative. Let's cherish the culinary heritage of the ingenious indigenous peoples bestowed upon us and ensure their legacy is honored and respected. After all, American cuisine is a mosaic, a collage of flavors and traditions that should be celebrated and preserved for generations to come. The First Musicians In the twisted tapestry of American history, Native American music emerges as a sacred symphony of the land's ancient traditions. Rooted in the very souls of its people, these ceremonial melodies bear witness to the whispers of deities, spirits, and revered ancestors. Weaving together song, dance, and costume, these rituals are more than mere performances, they're the lifeblood of Native American beliefs and cultural identity. Yet, like a fugitive at night, historical authenticity remains elusive due to scant documentation. The earliest echoes of Native American music coincide with the arrival of those European interlopers on these shores. So let us embark on an expedition to uncover the importance of Native American music in the annals of U.S. history and illuminate its impact on the cultural landscape of this nation. The oral tradition breathes life into Native American heritage, carrying epic sagas and the exploits of cultural heroes. These narratives resonate in the tribal music, an enduring chorus that sings of local identity and keeps the embers of history alive. With each retelling, the stories etch themselves deeper into the marrow of the people, a testament to the resilience of oral history. Music is the heartbeat of individual tribes, their essence distilled into a unique symphonic concoction. Each tribe is a symphony of diversity, with its instruments and dance forms reflecting the varied topographies and historical tapestries that define this land. In the powwows, ceremonies, and jubilations, music binds the Native American community to the spirits of nature, ancestors, and the cosmos. This profound spiritual connection resonates across generations, profoundly influencing their worldview and sense of belonging. The harmonies of Native American music have permeated the tapestry of American culture, leaving an enduring imprint on the nation's artistic and musical legacy. The echoes of this heritage reverberate amidst the myriad contemporary genres, a poignant testament to how the roots of American music extend far back into the timeless bedrock of Native traditions. Studying Native American music peels back the layers of history, revealing the cultural dynamics that have shaped this nation. It is a reminder that the valorization of oral traditions and cultural preservation is an acknowledgement of the invaluable contributions of Native Americans to the great American mosaic. But beware, for in the dark shadows of history lurks exploitation and commodification. The vultures of commercial gain have swooped down, plundering the richness of Native American music without remorse or respect. 
This heresy has led to misrepresentation and the marginalization of Native American communities. As if that weren't enough, the oppressor's grasp has stifled Native American traditions, throttling their music, language, and spiritual practices. The colonial chokehold and forced assimilation policies have strangled the essence of their musical heritage, resulting in the loss of precious traditions and knowledge. In delving into the mesmerizing melodies of Native American music, a profound journey unfolds, revealing the rich tapestry of cultural diversity that binds the very essence of the United States. This experience beckons us to face the specters of history, reckon with the errors of the past, and set forth on a transformative path toward unity. Only through such an odyssey can we aspire to forge an all-encompassing and compassionate society where the resonating notes of Native music echo with the strength of authenticity. This study safeguards endangered traditions and kindles the flame of cultural revival within Native American communities. It breathes life back into their identities, ensuring that the embers of their unique musical expressions burn brightly through the ages. Beyond the boundaries of time, Native American music beckons to contemporary artists and musicians, inspiring intercultural exchanges and creative amalgamations. The blending of old and new, traditional and modern, echoes the symphony of cultural diversity and orchestra of innovation and harmony. Native American music is a sentinel of American history, a sentinel that guards the gateways to cultural heritage and oral traditions. Though shrouded in the mists of time, its profound impact on American society remains an undeniable truth. To study and honor this ancient musical legacy is to weave a more compassionate, inclusive, and enlightened society. Within the sacred strains of Native American music, we find the keys to unlocking the doors of our shared humanity. Let's give a shout out to the fantastic team behind the scenes. Our executive producers, Ryan Lancaster and Ryan Lancaster, have been the driving force. Thanks to Ryan Lancaster, our sound engineer, for ensuring our voices sound their best. Ryan Lancaster's music composition adds that perfect touch to each episode. Our diligent research team, consisting of Ryan Lancaster and Ryan Lancaster, provides valuable insights. And a nod to Ryan Lancaster and Ryan Lancaster handling all things marketing and promotion. Special thanks to our families and friends for their unwavering support and the entire creative community. And, of course, a massive shout out to our listeners. Your feedback keeps us motivated. We're proud to have recorded this episode at the Ryan Lancaster Studios, our creative hub. Remember, the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of Ryan Lancaster and our guests. Until next time, I'm Professor Ryan Lancaster, and this is the RPTM Podcast. As we power down the engines of our trusty time machine, we hope you've enjoyed your journey through history without breaking the bank. The Reasonably Priced Time Machine podcast has taken us on an adventure through the ages while keeping our wallets intact. We've explored pivotal moments, met fascinating figures, and even saved a few bucks for more details, intriguing tidbits, and a chance to catch up on missed episodes. Head to RyanGLancaster.com and delve into the show notes. And before we close this chapter, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to rate us on the platform you're using to tune in, it helps us keep the chronicles coming. Thanks for joining us on this journey, fellow time travelers.